Okay, folks, turn your instructions back to number 27 and we'll read the last few. Instruction number 27, during the trial, you've been allowed to take notes. You may take these with you to the jury room to use in your deliberations. Remember, these are notes and not evidence. Generally, they reflect the recollection or impressions of the evidence as viewed by the person taking them and may be inaccurate or incomplete. Upon reaching a verdict, leave the notes in the jury room and they will be destroyed. Instruction number 28, during your deliberations, you must not communicate with or provide any information to anyone by any means about this case. You may not use any electronic device or media such as a telephone, cell phone, smartphone, iPhone, Blackberry, or computer, the internet, any internet service, or any text or instant messaging service, or any internet chat room, blog, or website, such as Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, or Twitter, to communicate to anyone any information about this case, or to conduct any research about this case until I accept your verdict. Your cell phones must be turned off during deliberations. If the length of deliberation causes you to need to make a call regarding personal arrangements, such as child care or other scheduling issues, you may make such calls when the jury takes a break and temporarily stops deliberations, but you must not discuss the case until after you've reached your verdict and I've released you from jury duty. Instruction number 29, when you begin your deliberations, you should select a foreman or forewoman. He or she shall see that your deliberations are carried on in an orderly manner, that the issues are fully and freely discussed, and that every juror is given an opportunity to express his or her views. In order to return a verdict, each juror must agree to it. Your verdict must be unanimous. It is your duty as jurors to consult with one another and reach an agreement if you can do so without compromising your individual judgment. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but do so only after an impartial consideration of the evidence with the other jurors. During your deliberations, do not hesitate to re-examine your view and change your opinion if convinced it is wrong but do not change your opinion as to the weight or effect of the evidence just because it is the opinion of the other jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. Remember, you are judges of the facts. Your sole duty is to find the truth and do justice. Instruction number 30, I am giving you one verdict form. You will find only one verdict. When you have agreed upon a unanimous verdict and the foreperson has signed the verdict form, please notify the court attendant. Signed at 2 p.m. this 20th day of September 2019. Okay, just a couple other small pieces of information before we send you out to start your deliberations. Occasionally during the deliberation process, the jury may have a question. If you have a question, you have to reduce your question to writing. It needs to be signed by your foreperson and given to the court attendant. The court attendant will bring the question to me. I'm required to inform the parties of the question and we have to make a record about your question and the proposed response to you you need to understand that words not specifically defined in the jury instructions should be given their ordinary meaning. I cannot comment to you about the evidence. You will receive no additional evidence. Uh, after I've talked with the attorneys, taken the time to make a record, we will get back to you with a written response. Typically that takes some time, some delay. You should bring your any written questions you have and the written responses you receive from me together with the verdict form into the courtroom when you've reached a verdict. All of you must be together when you deliberate in this case. If anyone steps out of the jury room to use the restroom, make a phone call, smoke a cigarette, whatever it may be, discussion about this case has to stop. You can only discuss this case in any capacity when all of you are together. 
the instructions talk about your cell phones being turned off. The court attendant will actually keep all of your cell phones and electronic devices. If you need to use your phone for some reason, you can ask the court attendant and she'll allow you to take a break and use your phones. Remember, you still can't use them to communicate with anyone about this case or to do anything to acquire any information about this case. Uh, last thing is, uh, there are 14 of you, only 12 of you get to deliberate. We have a jury of 12, two of you are alternates in case during this trial someone became ill or had an emergency. Uh, Mr. and Ms. will be the two alternates. The two of them cannot speak with the rest of you in any way about this case, their thoughts, their feelings, anything. When I excuse you very shortly here, all 14 of you will go to the jury room and Mr. and Ms. will collect any possessions they have, give the court attendant a cell phone number for them, and then they are excused and free to leave. The two of them remain under the admonition. You cannot uh, talk to anyone about the case, shouldn't draw any conclusions, and you cannot do anything to acquire any information about the case. If one of these jurors becomes ill or has an emergency, one of you may be called in to take their place. When the jury has reached a verdict, the court attendant or I will call both of the alternates and let you know what the verdict was and at that time release you from the admonition. Okay, throughout trial I've been telling you you can't discuss the case with anyone including each other. Now obviously is the point where the 12 of you are going to start discussing the case with each other. I have the verdict form and I'm going to give this to the court attendant and she will at this time take you back into the jury room to start your deliberations.